Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful stained glass window from a photo. First, choose a photo you'd like to use for your background. This will be the scene that you see through your window. Then, choose a colorful photo you'd like to use for the stained glass. I downloaded this image from Shutterstock.com. We'll work on the background first. Let's protect it by making it into a smart object, so anything we do to it will be non-destructive. Click on the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 5 pixels, then click OK or press Enter or Return. Make a new layer above the background by pressing Control shift n on Windows or Command shift n on a Mac. When you see this window, type in Glass Pane Letting. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. We'll fill the empty layer with white and since white is the background color, press Control or Command plus Delete. Click on the foreground color and for brightness type in 20%. This gives us a dark gray color which will be the color of the lead strips. Then press Enter or Return. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Texture folder and choose Stained Glass. The cell size creates smaller or larger cells and the border thickness makes the leading thinner or thicker. I'm choosing 46 for the cell size and 8 for the border thickness. However, depending on the size and resolution of your background photo, you may need to adjust these amounts to get a similar result. Go to Select and Color Range. Choose Highlights. Make the fuzziness 100% and the range 255. Then click OK. Press the Delete key to delete the white shapes and deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. You may see a subtle white fringe surrounding the letting. To remove it, go to Layer, Matting, and Defringe. Make the width 1 pixel. Notice the white fringe is now gone. Next, we're going to give the letting some dimension by giving it a bevel. Click the FX icon and choose Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, the technique is Smooth, the depth is 100% and the direction is Up. The size is 5 pixels and soften it 0 pixels. The angle should be anywhere between 120 to 135 degrees and the altitude is 30 degrees. The highlight mode is screen with an opacity of 75% and the shadow mode is multiply also with an opacity of 75%. Then click OK. Now we're ready to begin adding the stained glass to our window pane. First, click off the eyeball of the letting to hide it. We'll make it visible again after we create the colored stained glass. Open the photo of your image. We need to separate the subject from its background by making a selection around the subject. There are many ways to do this, so choose the method that's the easiest and most effective for you. For this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using this tool as well, just drag your cursor over the subject to select it. And to add a selection over an inside area, hold Alt or Option as you drag over it since white areas will ultimately become white pieces of stained glass it's not necessary to fill in all of the white areas if they're small press Q to see it as a quick mask if there are areas you need to retouch open your pencil tool and keep the hardness at hundred percent to reduce the size of the pencil tip press the left bracket key now retouch those areas Press Q again to revert it back into a selection. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut the subject from its background and copy it to its own layer. Press V to open your Move tool and drag your image onto the tab of your stained glass document. 
Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto your document and release. To reduce or enlarge your image to fit in the document, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. If your image is too large, as in this case, you may not be able to see the transform's bounding box. To see it, press Ctrl or Command 0. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, hold down Shift and Alt on Windows or Shift and Option on a Mac as you drag it in. Once you're happy with its size and position, press Enter or Return. To fit it back onto your screen, press Ctrl or Command-0. Convert it into a smart object and Ctrl-click or Command-click on it to make a selection of its shape. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Click the thumbnail of your stained glass subject to make it active. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. This time, we'll choose a smaller cell size and border thickness. Change the blend mode to multiply. Next, we'll surround the stained glass contours with a lead strip. To do this, click the FX icon and choose Stroke. Make the size 8 pixels and the position is outside. Then, click OK or press Enter or Return. As you can see, the stroke is too thick and bumpy, so we need to fix it. Click the Layer Mask to make it active, and go to Select and Refine Mask. Drag Smooth all the way to the right, as well as the contrast. Then, click OK. Now that the surrounding lead strip is smooth, we still need to make its thickness match the thickness of the leading in the stained glass pieces. To do this, double click on the stroke effect and for the size, type in an amount that matches the thickness of the leading in the stained glass. Write down the amount because we're going to refer to this number later. Then press enter or return. The next bunch of steps will give the leading dimension. Click the background to make it active and make a new layer above it. Type in white. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. We'll fill the empty layer with white and since white is the background color press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Next we need to temporarily remove the colored pieces leaving just the leading. To do this double click on your smart object to open your original image. We're going to fill it with white. Assuming your background color is still white, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Then press Ctrl or Command S to save it. However, do not close the document. Normally, we would close the smart object to affect those changes. However, in this case, don't close it. Open back up your stained glass document and you'll see that the color is now gone. Open your channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or command click on the RGB thumbnail to make a selection of its shape. Then invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Open back up the layers panel and make a new layer. Name it Letting. Fill it with your foreground color by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete. Deselect it and click back on the tab of the smart object to open it. Go to the history panel. If you don't see it, go to window and history. There should be only two levels in the history panel. Open and fill layer. Click open and your smart object reverts back to its original state. Click the small X on the right side of the tab to close the smart object and when you see this warning click yes to save the changes. Immediately the stained glass colors reappear because the smart object has been updated from a white background to the original fish. Now let's add the bevel to the leading. Click the FX icon and click bevel and emboss. We'll keep the same settings as before. Then press enter or return. Hide the white layer 
and under the smart object, hide the stroke effect. This instantly cleans up your stained glass. Place your cursor on this icon and double click it to edit the filter blending options of the smart object. This window will appear. Change the blend mode to screen. Then click OK. Next, we'll increase its contrast and vibrancy to make the stained glass really come alive. Click the adjustment layer icon and choose brightness contrast. Go to your subject's layer mask, hold down Alt or Option, and drag a copy of it on top of the adjustment layer's layer mask. If you see this warning, click Yes. Click the adjustment layer icon next to the layer mask and adjust the brightness and contrast. I'll increase the brightness to 20 and the contrast to 100. Click the adjustment layer icon again and this time choose Vibrance. As before, go to the layer mask, hold down Alt or Option, drag a copy on top of the Vibrance layer mask and click Yes. Click the Vibrance icon and slide the Vibrance and Saturation all the way to the right. The final steps will place our stained glass onto the clear glass panels. Make the top layer active. On top of this layer, we'll place a composite snapshot of your image. To do this, press Ctrl Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Control click or command click on the layer mask to make a selection of its shape. Go to select, modify and expand. Expand it by the same amount of pixels you wrote down earlier for the leading that surrounds your stained glass image. In my case it's four pixels. Then click OK. The selection should be flush with the outer edge of the leading. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut your stained glass from its background and copy it to its own layer. Now we can trash the composite snapshot since we don't need it anymore. Make your glass pane letting visible again to complete your stained glass window. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.